eyes to see. Now, most of us are familiar with the psychophysiologic emotional result of Christianity use, having looked closely at the familiar, more obviously virulent fundamentalist strain. But not many of us are fully cognizant of the dangers of even the milder softcore forms of Christianity. New studies show that even this softcore Christianity can be a serious problem. These studies shine a light upon a previously little known and dimly understood effect of Christianity upon the body and how this relates to the mental and emotional deterioration within the Christianity user. This can be accurately compared to, indeed accurately defined, as a psychophysiological chemical addiction within the body of Christ which the user inexorably becomes. The cycle of sin, guilt, repentance, relief, or redemption, which instills such a vice-like grip, and actually becomes a grip-like vice in the Christ worshiper, can now be understood in terms of just what actually goes on within the brain itself. It is suggested that the key to this riddle may be in relating this effect to the previously known action of endorphins within the brain. Now, endorphins are enzymes which are naturally produced in the brain as an analgesic or pain reliever. They are the body's own aspirin, so to speak. When the body feels pain or is under physical stress, the brain secretes this chemical which molecularly attaches itself to the pain-sensing areas which then cease to register or lessen the pain or stress and the discomfort is assuaged. Other stresses may result as well in endorphin production. Physical exercise, such as jogging, is a good example. The strain under which the body is placed by a long run may trigger endorphin production to combat the ache and muscle stress. This chemical, in easing the pain, actually produces an overarching feeling of well-being and euphoria, commonly known as the jogger's high. Indeed, athletes are known to become addicted to this high, and compulsive running or working out in the gym may result. Opiates actually mimic the chemical structure of endorphins as their molecules are similar to the endorphins, allowing them to attach to the same area of the brain at the molecular level. And the opiate's high is a perverse simulacrum of the natural enzyme function the feeling of well-being previously mentioned in the joggers. Unfortunately, in the case of opiates such as morphine and heroin, however, soon enough the lack of this very substance becomes its own triggering stress, and the substance's function becomes the assuaging of its own absence. The person can then be said to be addicted. Now, the recent study, which is the focus of this report, suggests that a previously unknown enzyme which has properties similar to the endorphins and to the opiates, has been discovered. Like endorphins, these are produced by the body itself, albeit the unhealthy body, as Scribe JB will later explain. And like the opiates, such as heroin, this chemical produces a dangerous addiction. This newly discovered substance has been dubbed Emanuin. The stress trigger for Emanuin is what is commonly called guilt, although the Emanuin addict knows it in his or her addict in lingo as sin. Now, sin is a form of emotional stress which triggers the Emanuin production and results in the drugged up high known to the Christ worshiper as the blessing. And those who experience it are said to know the blessedness of the blessed. Unfortunately, the Christian, who comes to know of this experience as being his personal walk with the Lord, or having a personal relationship with Jesus, as talking with the Savior, or any of a number of self-delusionary euphemisms, becomes increasingly immune like the heroin addict, to the euphoric or salvific effects of Emmanuel as this addiction progresses. A buck-crazy Jesus junkie, blissed out on bless, can be a truly terrifying sight. 
they can be seen actively recruiting new addicts, witnessing, as they sometimes call it, door to door, on street corners, or on the television and radio, even at the conventions of major political parties. Look into their eyes. They seem to be drugged up, don't they? Well, they are. Now, how does a Christian keep his drug supply steady? He must feel the guilt to have it assuaged. This is done by sinning. They even have a manual on how to achieve this. They call it their Bible, which comes complete with its Ten Commandments as instructions to the sin guilt redemption cycle. Now, as this addiction progresses, the Christian, much like the heroin addict, requires a greater and greater sin to maintain the same Emmanuel high that smaller sin produced even a short time before. They may begin, in the new convert, by feeling a satisfying rush of redemption blessing for, well, say, parking in a handicap zone or mild cheating on their income tax. Later, once the cycle is well established, they may progress to having sex with altar boys or cruising for hookers with which to perform pornographic acts or operate church-run daycare centers where their Emmanuel production can be assured. The daily newspapers will show that there is little that a Christian will not do in his or her fervent grasping for forgiveness and blessedness. Now, the ravages of runaway Emmanuel dependency is a harrowing sight to behold. Recovering from the horrors of Emmanuel poisoning can prove to be an almost impossible task. When deprived of their fix, or as it is known to them, their crucifixion, the Jesus worshiper begins to see devils and evil spirits everywhere. Even popular television personalities such as Dan Rather or Murphy Brown can appear to be threatening to the Emmanuel ravaged mind. They must then become prayer warriors to fight this perceived threat. This may involve the sending of the money or offering to those who traffic in the misery of the addicted. They call this tithing. And yes, as in other drug addictions, the faculty of reason is the first part of the mind to suffer. Reason may become so atrophied by this abuse that the poor sufferer no longer believes in the great law of evolution. Yes, we the fortunate international secular atavists can see that given the amount of sense that evolution gave to a blind cave bat, anyone must rejoice happily in the evolutionary functions of the meaningless and senseless speciation which gave a rise to Homo sapiens sapiens. Unfortunately, these Christians, displaying less brain wattage in what has been left of their mind, than a hay-infused petri dish filled with paramecium threaten innocent, malleable children in their recruitment drive with prayer in schools, and in the most sinister plot of all, the removal of the teaching of Darwinian evolutionary truths from classrooms. These fiends must be stopped. Parents, Christ-proof your children. They must be safe from the jaws of Jesus. The preceding has been a warning of what may be in store for your children. Parents, be vigilant.